What I thought I'd do is a brief introduction on a series of videos I'm going to shoot, about 20 of them. This, I hope, will help you think on the guitar fretboard and express your ideas on the guitar fretboard and give you a vocabulary and language that you understand. I'm going to uh, work through excerpts from my book called Essentials for the Improvising Guitar Player. You can pick that up on Amazon. It helps support this channel. I'd appreciate if you did. What is an arpeggio? And this would uh, apply to what is a chord as well. So be before we, we do anything, we think of a scale first. So in this case, we're just thinking of a C major scale. And, uh, and naturally, you can play that all over the fretboard, but that's not what we're talking about right now. From that scale, we take the first degree of the scale, the third and the fifth degree of the scale. So first degree, third, and fifth. And we have a C major chord. That's all we need, three notes uh, to, to make a C major chord. Um, you, you probably play C major chords like this, you know, there's all lots of different ways to play uh, to play a chord, but all you're doing is duplicating the same notes in uh, in different octaves. Okay, so the, the the process that we just went through was take a note, skip a note, take a note, skip a note, take a note. Right? Take, skip, take, skip, and take. Uh, that's the way we build chords, and that's the way we build arpeggios. It's called tertian harmony. Uh, because the uh, the notes are in thirds, tertian thirds, right? So C to E is a third. It happens to be a major third. E to G is a minor third. So a major chord is made up of a major third and a minor third interval. I think I've got another another plate here that'll explain that a little bit better. So here's the uh, here's the major chord, the first three notes of a major scale, C D E. And the major third would be the C to the E. It's two full tones that make a major third. And as an example for a minor third, D to E would be a tone and E to F would be a semitone. And so a minor third is one semitone smaller than a major third. That's, that's easy to remember. So when we build chords, we stack thirds on top of each other. So take a note, skip a note. We've got a major third and a minor third to build a, uh, a, a root position major triad. Now, the, these things you can do on, on the guitar fretboard if you want to experiment and start playing these chords around the fretboard. You know, here in another position, C, E, and G, right? Or C, E, and G. There's there's lots of uh, in a low, lower octave and so on. So it's just the, what makes the chord is those three notes, and we consider the scale to be the foundation of those uh, of those three notes. And the way the reason I'm going through this simple stuff first is because we have to know that we have a firm foundation first before we can start building. Talking about building, let's go one step further. We have a C note and then an E note and a G note as we did here, but now we're going to add another note in the scale with the same method of take a note, skip a note, take a note, skip a note, take a note, skip a note, take a note, right? Uh, so th in this case, we're going to the seventh degree of the scale. So degree one, degree three, degree five, and degree seven. And this would spell a C major seven chord. The root of the scale, and up to the three, and then up to the five, and now up to the, the seven. If, we, if I take those four notes and put them together, we have a major seven chord in different positions. Right, these are all different voicings of a C major 7 chord. Okay, so now we've got a four-note chord, which we call a seventh chord. Now, I'm, I'm not saying, we're not, we're not defining whether it's a major 7 or a minor 7 or a dominant 7th right now. We, we will do that as we move through. Okay, so to talk about the fretboard just a little bit, if we spell those notes on the fretboard, here's an example of, of a, um, a short diagram of the fretboard. One, three, 
three, five, and and the seven, and then we do that same thing again. One, three, five, seven. Right. This is just in one position. We we can do this all over the fretboard, and this would be a different study, right? Like in terms of the mechanics of the fretboard, you know, I can. And so on. You know, we could go we could go across the entire fretboard. But what I'm what I'm trying to establish today is that you understand how uh, how chord spellings work, and we'll dig into the fretboard a little bit more as we go along. Okay. So what we've established thus far is that we go through this method of take a note, skip a note, take a note, skip a note, take a note, skip a note, take a note. And that will give us a seventh chord because we're it's a four-note chord working through this idea of tertian harmony. You know, if we move in third, C to E is a third, E to G is a third, G to B is a third, right? And also we begin with the foundation of a, um, a major scale. Let's step a little further than that and do the same thing from the second degree of the scale. So we're going to take a note from the D, right, being the second note of the scale. Now we're not spelling a C major 7 chord anymore. We're going to end up spelling a D minor 7. So take a note, skip a note, take a note, skip a note, take a note, skip a note, take a note. We end up, we end up now with the notes D, F, A, and C. The D minor chord is diatonic chord, right? That means that it's according to the notes in the scale. So according to the scale. So uh, D minor is, is, we call it the two chord because it's built on the second degree of the scale. So if I, if I play um, uh, the notes of that, of that chord, as, as it's voiced here, I have a real stinker of a chord, and I'm not suggesting you play this. <laughs> But there is uh, there is a D minor seven D F A C. Normally we would voice a chord like that, more like this, right? That's why we have voicings on the guitar fretboard because uh, because some some voicings are just unless you've got like 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 fingers like a uh, Talfarlo or something. They're, 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 these that voicings like that would be would be um, uh, rather difficult to change quickly. But the point is uh, that uh, that these are the notes that are in the chord that that are that are required to spell a D minor seven chord. In terms of chord function, we have a one chord, which is the C major. In the key of C major, we have the one chord of C major. Right? I'll voice it like this. And now we have the two chord of D minor. So C major 7, D minor 7. Underneath that, I still have a C major scale underneath this. So I have, you know, this is also also a C major scale, except I'm just emphasizing the D. That's a little bit more on that later. Uh, I'm, I'm emphasizing the notes. Uh, I'm aware of the notes in the chord when I when I play uh, when I play the um, improvisations, which that wasn't much of one. And then we're going to go to the five chord uh, for reasons that will be clear later. The G seven chord that is built again. It's diatonic within the within the uh, scale, and so we take the one, the three, the five. And the seven, I end up with another, another, you know, piano voicing. But we would normally voice that like something like this, or, or, you know, all those are exactly the same notes of G, B, D, and F. In some cases, we eliminate a note uh, to get a nice, uh, simple, quick changing voicing. Um, and so now I have a one chord, a two chord, and a five chord, one of the most common chord progressions in jazzier stuff. 
is uh, is the two five one progression two five G seven and the one the red resolution right now when I say resolution that means that both of those chords the D minor seven and the G seven one being what we call a subdominant sound the other being a dominant sound want to resolve to a tonic sound two chord five chord and one chord you can hear that that right is resolved and five chord that that wants to be resolved right and and there it is okay sounds a little loungy but that's okay um all right so now uh what do you do with this information um I, I would suggest that uh, that a good place to start is uh, is to get a C major scale underneath your fingers. I mean, like get a scale underneath your fingers that's all over the fretboard. If you're not familiar with your scales, then then you know get my book on scales, which you can also get on Amazon. Uh, the The idea with the scale uh, is is that you, you 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 play it in every position on the fretboard, right? So you fill up the fretboard. You don't you don't have any gaps. The same thing, right? I'm just moving, you know, through the scale up and down the fretboard. That is is really good uh, uh, preliminary work uh, prior to uh, to moving uh, to arpeggios and uh, and chord spellings. Because as I said, uh, the foundation of arpeggios, the foundation of chords, begins with uh, with scales. So in this case, it's just the one scale that we're that we're dealing with. Nothing, nothing hugely complicated. Uh, the scale is made up of a tone, tone, and a semitone. Tone, 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 semitone. Two tones and a semitone. Three tones and a semitone. A tone is the distance of two frets on the guitar. That's a tone. A semitone is a distance of one fret. Right. If I did that, that played a scale on one string. Tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. That F sharp sounded like, like a, almost like a wrong note because I've been playing in the key of C here. But that was a G major scale. Tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Exactly. All major scales are identical. All, all of the you know, so so uh, the, the, if you look at scales from from the from the note perspective, like what notes are in the scale, that's going to be really confusing. Look at what distances are in the scale: tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. It's the same is going to be held. Uh, it will will remain true for G major scale, F major scale, B flat major scale, F sharp major scale. It doesn't matter. It's they're all exactly the same. Uh, scales, uh, with the exception of starting from a different tonal center, right? Okay, uh, that's that's a little bit more on scales that I wanted to get into. So this is what chord spelling is about, and I'm going to take this a little further until we get to the point where you can you can real time spell chords on the uh, on the fretboard and read through a chart by spelling chords not by having chord pictures uh, not by learning chords from chord diagrams but from actually spelling uh, in real time what it is you you want to play right okay if this video was helpful to you, like, subscribe. It helps the algorithm immensely. Buy me a coffee. Buy one of my books, which you can get on Amazon. And please leave a question. I get back to all the questions with fairly lengthy answers. So thanks for stopping by. Thanks for your support. And we'll see you real soon.